Hi, I'm Celeste Condit, and I'm here to overview uh, an article I wrote for Sociology Compass about genetic determinism. You are probably well aware that for the last 50 years or so, scientists have been very interested in exploring genetics and DNA. At the same time, many people have been a little bit concerned about what the social and ethical impacts of that research might be. So I've done a review of the literature in one area, that is, the impact of genetic determinism on attitudes and behaviors. And what I've found is both good news and bad news. So the bad news first. The bad news is that as many critics feared, the research literature has come to show that genetic determinism is associated with what many people consider negative attitudes, uh, hierarchical attitudes like racism and sexism. And this means not only that people who are more racist and more sexist are more prone to be genetic determinists, it also means that when we give messages to people about genetic determinism, it tends to heighten racism and sexism. So that's pretty bad news. Now that bad news is mitigated by uh, a lot of research showing uh, several factors. The first is that most people really aren't genetic determinists. Instead of understanding human characteristics as being caused solely by genes, they tend to understand them as caused by multiple factors. So genes may play a role, but they also think that social environment and especially personal will plays a role in outcomes uh, of human characteristics and behaviors. In addition, people also tend to listen to messages about uh, genetics in ways such that they don't hear them as deterministic. So, for example, if they hear a message about someone having a gene for heart disease, they don't immediately assume that that means that the person uh, inevitably is going to get heart disease. Instead, they see it as a message that talks about conveying higher risk. Finally, the research indicates that message, uh, testing uh, for genetics doesn't necessarily produce uh, an attitude that prevents people from changing their behavior. That was a concern because if people were uh, going to respond to messages about genetics uh, in a deterministic fashion, then giving them genetic test results would lead them to think there was nothing they could do about getting the disease rather than motivating them to, take, um, to make changes in their behaviors. Fortunately, however, uh, that doesn't seem to happen for most people. Now, it doesn't mean that genetic tests are highly motivating. Uh, the level of motivation seems to depend on how much you're asking them to do. So, for example, if you're asking them to get a colonoscopy or a mammography screen, then the genetic test might help motivate them toward that. On the other hand, if you're trying to ask them to change their diet massively or adopt an exercise program, you might have less uh, impact on that, just as we do with other kinds of health interventions. So what should we do in the future for research in this area? Well, I think one thing we need to ask is whether messages that explicitly talk about gene-environment interaction have the same negative and perhaps ameliorative, ameliorative effects that messages that just talk about genes do. And some people are working on that research. So after you read the article, if you would like to talk to me about it, I'd be delighted to hear from you at ccondit.uga.edu. And um, I hope you enjoy reading the article.